In our work that is published as a neural resource in this issue of Neuron, we address several limitations with regard to visualization of activity in various cell types in the brain. We took advantage of the strong expertise in genetics here at the University of Utah, particularly in Mario Capecchi lab, and built a new mouse line that robustly reports activity in neurons, astrocytes, and microglia. It works so well that we can even watch waves of activity in the heads of intact newborn mice. The brain is made up of networks of neurons and glia. In order to better understand healthy brain function and how this function changes in the diseased state, the ability to measure network activity with single cell resolution is imperative. Intracellular calcium dynamics reflect cellular activity and can be visualized with fluorescent calcium indicators with high spatial and temporal resolution. The Lauren Luger lab at Genelia Farm has led the development of the GCAMP family, a group of genetically encoded calcium indicators which can be endogenously expressed in the brain. Our new reporter line called PCG5TDT expresses GCAMP5G in a Cree-dependent fashion, allowing for expression in specific cell types. We targeted our construct to the RNA polymerase II locus, permitting straightforward crossing with other available reporter lines. This locus also appears to be more highly active in glial cells than ROSA26. The inclusion of TD tomato offers several benefits, including detection of GCAMP5 positive cells in quiescent tissue, the ability to visualize full cell morphology, and in some Cree crosses, cheap and easy phenotyping. In our report, we demonstrate the power of the PCG5TDT line for the study of neurons, astrocytes, and microglia. We would now like to share with you some of the highlights from this report. This new tool will be valuable for the study of neurons in vivo and in vitro. We found really good expression levels in both hippocampal neurons and neocortical cells. In addition, we had really good signal-to-noise ratio with a minimum detection of two to three spikes and a linear scaling of fluorescence with spike count. To assess the potential impact of GCAM5 expression on the electrophysiological properties of CA1 neurons, we use frequency current relationships and long-term potentiation to measure both the intrinsic and synaptic plasticity effects of GCAM5. We found that both measures were normal relative to animals not expressing GCAM5. Over the last two decades, astrocytes have gained much notoriety for being active participants in a number of CNS functions. However, the field as a whole has been held back by the use of calcium indicator dyes, which are unable to be bulk loaded into older slices and astrocytic fine processes. To combat these shortcomings, we designed a Cree dependent GCAM5 reporter mouse. In our study, we demonstrated that we can effectively monitor acidic calcium throughout the entire brain at any age in a number of scenarios ranging from spontaneous activity to sensory evoked calcium transients in vivo. With this advancement in genetic technology, we believe that the true role and nature of astrocytes in physiology and pathophysiology will finally be appreciated. Microglia are very important for maintaining and modulating neural circuits, but until now, intracellular calcium activity has been very difficult to study for numerous technical reasons. In our paper, we demonstrate that this new mouse reporter works very well in these cells. It will enable researchers to probe microglial activity in various mouse models of neuroinflammatory and neurodegenerative disorders. So this tool was developed as a collaboration among people in a number of uh, research areas, including bioengineering, genetics, pharmacology, and neurobiology, and I think it's useful in all of those uh, fields. What's really interesting about this uh, tool is that we can study calcium transients in a number of cell types, and we can zoom in uh, to study microscopic subcellular details, as well as zoom out, and I think more interestingly, study network activity. And to just give you an example of the kind of project that this uh, tool is really enabling for us, uh, my collaborator Carol Wilcox and I have a great, pro a great new project that involves studying the pathophysiology of astrocytes and epilepsy and in brain inflammation. And this tool is enabling us to look at that problem with unprecedented levels of detail.